Good afternoon. Thanks for everyone who is still with us. Uh, my name is William Nixon. I'm from the University of Glasgow and I'm Assistant Director for Academic Engagement and Digital Library and that includes our repository service which is called Enlighten which cuts across uh, sort of open access, research publications, uh, research data um, and impact. And I want to just give a little snapshot of um, the, as Kaz and kind of Ginny and colleagues have done, so answering some of the, the questions that uh, Kathleen uh, had posed and just giving a sort of flavour and an update of where we are in the, the UK. Um, and again, I think, you know, some of what we've already seen today really kind of resonates with what uh, I'm going to cover. Um, so I did a bit of crowdsourcing to the UK's community of repository managers to uh, feed into this. And in terms of the question of the kind of broader ecosystem, again, that question of curation and ensuring the content is maintained, looking at where there can be integrations between uh, repositories and digital preservation platforms. So that can be prints in Archivematica, it could be Archivum, other platforms are available. Um, it's about making sure that they're actually considered um, part of the essential infrastructure, part of the IT infrastructure, not just a sort of an application or a sideline, and that they are essential for supporting and delivering open scholarship. Um, that also can support some of our kind of research funding as well as kind of national research uh, assessment exercises and extending it beyond the kind of just the journal articles, looking at where we include sort of open access monographs, research data, really sort of supporting, enhancing and kind of realizing that bibliodiversity. In terms of the current status in the UK, there's a sense that repositories are sort of in a good place, but actually, uh, you know, Ginny's comments in Australia kind of resonated concerns about software, longe so software longevity, uh, upgrades. So this, is, this kind of really ties into, you know, some of the strategic kind of work of um, CORE itself where there, there is that intersection between current research information systems and repositories. There's a really high take up of those in the, in the UK. And also, you know, where those sit with regards to commercial systems, you know, commercial vendors rather than uh, open infrastructure. But I just wanted to, I've got a couple of slides to follow this, to kind of highlight a, a couple of interesting things which are going on now. Um, we've just come out of the other side of a, a national assessment exercise looking at research for 157 universities here in the UK called REF 2021. And that has highlighted the improved quality of our research across the UK. But what was really interesting about this exercise is that it had a very strong open access component. Um, the subjects that were returned uh, in each institution for its subject could only have 5% uh, of the outputs which were not, uh, which were journal articles, which were not open access compliant. So this was a huge driver towards um, open access. So much of the content that was actually assessed, uh, actually submitted to this assessment exercise was open access. But in order for us to have the broadest pool, institutions were really driving the, the, the sort of move towards that mix of both green and gold. And that content was held in institutional repositories. That's had an impact on the Leiden rankings as well. If you look at the top 15 repositories with more than 10,000 outputs, the percentage of open access uh, which, uh, are all in the United Kingdom. And in April this year, they, there's a new open access, new national open access funder policy from the UK Research and Innovation um, you know, Office, which kind of brings together funding and uh, from a, a number of our kind of national funding groups to drive and support wider open access and open access 
deposit, looking at supporting um, repositories as a route into that for compliance. So all of that at a national level is at a very high level. Um, the UK uh, core, the UK community for research repository managers did a survey. Uh, the results came out last December. Um, it was really interesting. It's a mix of a technical survey and a sort of feelings survey. Um, so it indicated that, for instance, here, um, certainly in the UK, ePrint is still the most common, followed by DSpace and Pure, uh, which I would consider uh, a Chris is actually in that mix. Um, but again, uh, the number of institutions which have had their current platform for more than eight years was 65%. And I think there is definitely, you know, some scope, some investment there around um, upgrades and uh, work being done in uh, kind of optimizing repositories. Um, interestingly, however, they had a, a barometer of repository happiness level, which was essentially how happy are you with your repository? And um, interestingly, it showed that generally uh, colleagues in UK institutions were generally happy with their repository. However, when you actually dig down to some of the results, um, it does flag some of the, the issues around, for instance, the user experience, some of the workflows, some of the underlying technologies. So there's a little bit of a kind of uh, a tension there around that. And there's also been um, perhaps uh, less of an urgency for many UK colleagues to, with particularly how important REF 2021 is, to actually make any wholesale institutional changes to their, to their setup, which has really driven some of that. The UK or uh, UKRI open access policy, just to draw attention um, here, that uh, under Route 2, publish the research article in an institutional or subject repository at the time of final publication. Um, and even where research articles are made available in open access in journals and so on, it's very common that UK universities are taking and holding copies of those outputs in the repository as well. So they will have a mix of those, which really brings into uh, the mix uh, the whole question around kind of licensing and rights retention and so on. Again, here, just the sort of Leiden rankings, uh, looking at sort of the, you know, the top 15. And I it would be interesting to see what this looks like when they, they, they come out again. Um, but certainly, I think this is a really strong indicator of the impact of that high level strategic uh, decision from funders and national government around how important um, open access is and the role that repositories play. There's a discussion to have subsequently there about potentially a disconnect around that investment and so on around that space, but it was really just to sort of highlight these rankings. The challenges that colleagues had identified, some of them were either, uh, I thought this was a, a, an entertaining uh, comment, if you can't beat them, join them, trying to get our Chris systems to behave more like repositories, I think was definitely scope for some discussion uh, around that there. Uh, extending the range of the repositories range of content. So again, we are really moving beyond more traditional textual material. We've got uh, quite a few uh, research data repositories, but where new and more uh, complex content is uh, becoming available, how we can manage and support that and also provide some of that content. And as I commented there, many UK universities are doing some work around rights retention and licensing, looking at helping and supporting our authors and our academic colleagues to ensure they're compliant with the funder, but also compliant with the requirements of the kind of national policies, but also publisher conditions and so on as well. So that's become a really uh, kind of strong area of, of growth. What would we like to do? More efficient reporting, um, enhanced uh, OEI export, being able to push much more of this data out, being able to more readily capture uh, 
contributor role taxonomy. Uh, this is the sort of credit where we can assign different roles to, to uh, uh, academic colleagues or to authors in that. And again, you know, reflecting the, the need that research outputs go beyond journal articles and PDF files. So again, echoing comments from other colleagues around appropriate workflows, functionality, and curation. And what colleagues in the UK had intimated that would be helpful from core case studies uh, on how repositories are integrated with other systems, that sort of interoperability, continuing to push for standards, particularly with sort of funders where they are used in policy making, working with the uh, software providers and the vendors around embedding those standards. And again, you know, further interoperability and sharing amongst those repositories collectively so that we can all benefit from scaling up and unlocking and making available this breadth of open access and research, supporting that agenda around equity, the UNESCO uh, you know, global science uh, initiative and the, you know, kind of being able to, you know, support all of that opening up beyond uh, our own countries and our own institutions. So I'd like to thank colleagues on UCOR, thank the UCOR uh, survey and so on, and thank everyone for their attention from uh, this morning and this afternoon's session. Thanks very much.